darkness is nothing to fear. In our darkest moments, we learn who we are. Hello everyone, Wicked Gaming back here again with another Dark Star update. Let's talk today about game setting. So, there are a lot of mods out there that change different game settings, and the reason is that Xbox players can't do that on their own. These settings that are referred to as game settings aren't the ones that you can set in the settings menu yourself. They are control settings for how the game behaves. Um, a lot of these are possible to change with I and I file tweak by PC players. Uh, but for those PC players that are less savvy at doing that or don't want to do it, um, their only other option is mods like this. Well, let's go over what I changed, why I changed it, and how it all affects you. So, the first three, and this will always be in this info kiosk, by the way. Just a little side note there. If I ever add a new game setting override, it will get added to this detail list here. You can always come and double check. Um, so, I had to change the leveled actor scaling to make things more reasonable. And I had to change the NPC health scale. So, um, to give you an example, a random Crimson Fleet guy that you run into today in the vanilla game is going to have a base of 50 hit points, and then he's going to gain 20 hit points for every level that he is. So if he's level 98, that's 98 times 20 plus 50. That's that's how the game calculates its health. And then that is scaled based on their level actor multiplier and all that. So there are some tweaks to it. There's some, some adjustments that happen based on gear they might be equipped with and, and things of that nature, but that's the baseline. Um... Mods like Royal Leveled, Royal Immersive Leveled Enemies, uh, which I used to use, um, that it decreases this down to 10. Um, to, but to me, that made all of the higher level NPCs feel like glass cannon. Uh, for those unfamiliar with that term, a glass cannon can do a lot of damage, but it's easy to shatter. Uh, versus an iron cannon, which is very hard to crack, especially if you're shooting at it from a distance. So, um... I didn't want glass cannon. I also didn't want damaged sponges. I had to find a balance between the two situations. We got to the best sweet spot we could, that the we being me and my alpha testers. Um, we played with this, this value and dialed it up and down and up and down, trying to find where it gameplay felt natural. It didn't feel overly spongy and it didn't feel like you were blowing through the content with reckless abandon. Um, 10 was way too low. 12.5 is where I started my numbers. That was too low. Um, 15 was almost there. 17 ended up being just right. So that's how we found this number. That's why we stuck there. Uh, the next three settings, the shipbuilder max size X, Y, and then Z, those affect the size that you can build your ship to in the shipbuilder. And that is from center. So that it would be along the X coordinate axis you would get 120 meters in each direction. 120 meters in each direction for Y, and then 60 meters in each direction for Z. So you can build really tall ships now, really long and really wide ship. There is a limit to this that you need to place on yourself. And that is if you are on a slow PC, lower end PC, or an Xbox Series S, and to a lesser extent the X, um, you are going to want to not push your ship to the actual limit. If you do, you risk crashing your game or you risk causing yourself undue lag. So it's up to you to decide through playtesting of your own which setting, which, which size range is safe for you to use. I can't tell you what that is going to be. I know that this is a good safe upper limit for a medium to a high scale uh, PC. Um, we play tested on a series of medium and high scale PCs. I did not push the build limits to the Mac on Xbox, but I did go beyond the vanilla build limit on Xbox in my testing and it worked fine. So what you're capable to do of doing in this, how much of this limit you're able to take advantage of, it's going to depend on what system are you gaming on? What other mods do you have running? If you are running a lot of high graphic ship part mods, you may want to constrain yourself and maybe not build a 240 meter long ship. <laughs> if you do that, 
to yourself and then come to Discord and complain that it crashed your game, I'm going to tell you, I told you so. <laughs> so you have to use restraint. I know that's hard as a gamer sometimes to use restraint. I'm there. I feel you. But you're going to want to create a hard save, get into the shipbuilding, see how far you can push the limit before it starts giving you lag, and then dial it back a bit. That's the best advice I can give you. The second best shipbuilding advice I can give you in regards to this is Habs cause more lag than anything else. For those of you that are out there playing on weaker systems and trying to throw every Hab in the game onto your ship, you are doing yourself no favor. There's a reason why I run ships with only one, two, or three Habs, and it's because of the lag that they can cause. That's especially true if you're trying to use the cloaking device. If you try and install the Dark Star cloaking device on a ship that has 20 Habs, you're not going to have a good day. <laughs> Keep your ships small in the Hab regard at the very least, and they will perform much, much better. Next up was the required set of reciprocal changes to landable max size. I had to make sure that this landable max size allowed for the maximum size ship you were allowed to build now. So while you can go 120 in each direction, X and Y, and 60 in each direction for Z, you can now also land at a total of 240X, 240Y, and 120Z. So this means you can have a 240 meter long ship that's 240 meters wide and 120 meters tall, if your system can handle it. Landable medium size is half of the max and uh, landable small size is just over half of that. Um, so these are upgrades over the vanilla game, um, significant upgrades, uh, but they're, you know, of course, don't compete with this guy. So for those of you who have been asking, can large ships land on the Omen? Uh, my whole time, my thought was, why don't you look at the size of the Omen and, and take a gap? It's huge. It's massive. It takes almost 45 seconds to run from tip to tip of this thing. It's gigantic. Why wouldn't I also upgrade the landing size? Come on. Come on, guy. All right. Jokes aside, uh, I also had to change the workshop build height to allow these things to go as far into the sky as they do. While I was in there, I went ahead and updated the Mac Outpost name limit. Um, I don't know why this was set to 20, but I've set it to 64. If this causes you problems somewhere else, let me know and I'll, I'll consider dialing it back down. While I was changing that name limit, I also changed the name limit on weapons and armor. Um, this is proven working on PC. Both of those are. Um, whether or not they get carried into Xbox, I couldn't tell you because I I changed these two settings after my full play pass on Xbox. But Xbox already had a higher limit. Couldn't tell you why, but they did. Um, I had to change the max character or the max level setting for all NPCs to 999. That's what these three are. And of course, to be kind to you, I also increased the number of modules that you can attach to your ship. Um, I, th I believe the base game, it, this value is either 130 or 135, I forget off the top of my head, but now it's 250. Um, that's tons of, of ship parts. Um, and then maximum owned ships, Darkstar Astrodynamics bumped this to 25 at one point. Darkstar bumps it to 100. Um, if you're running both mods at the same time, make sure Dark Star loads after Dark Star Astrodynamic. And then the Workshop Auto Foundation height limit was increased from, I think it was 20 to 120 to allow the halves and the airlocks and, and the uh, landing pads to go into the sky like I've got them. And there you have it. Those are the game setting overrides done by Dark Star. Um, I highly recommend if you're looking at or currently using other mods that tweak some of these numbers that you decide which one you want to keep. Um, if it's one of the other smaller ones that just tweaks one game setting and you prefer their setting, make sure it loads after Dark Star. Um, otherwise, most of those, most players are going to be able to just turn off and use only Dark Star. So um, there you have it. Uh, I will talk to you all again soon with another update video. Peace.